In last week's video, we took a look at the most important fundamental concepts within the React library. So the goal for this week's video is to take those same concepts and actually apply them. So what we're going to do is we're going to be building a simple yet practical real life project using React and then the GitHub API. In fact, let me show you a quick demo of what it is that we're going to be building together. So here on screen right now, you can see that I've got an input that is prompting me to go ahead and type in a GitHub username. So let me go ahead and do that. So I've typed in coding with Chaim. Let me hit enter. And now here I am now. I have a list of a bunch of repositories that I have under the coding with Chaim username. Let me go ahead and click on one of these guys. And then you can see here on the right hand side, I now get some additional details about the GitHub repository. It shows me the name again. I see how many forks it has, its primary language, and then I also see how many stars the project actually has. So this is going to be the project that we're going to be building together. So of course, we've got quite a lot to cover. So let's get into it. So one of the first things that I should probably mention right before we get started is the fact that this video assumes you already have some basic understanding of the React ecosystem and the React library as a whole. Now, if you're not already familiar with React, I actually made a video just about that very topic and you can find a link to that down in the description box below or up here in the cards. And I highly suggest you watch that video before you watch this one. So now the first thing that we really need to do is kind of use the uh, Create React App tool to go ahead and bootstrap a new React project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So here I am now in my terminal. I'm using the NPX tool to call upon the Create React App tool. And the name of the project is going to be Repo Details. So let me hit enter. I'm going to let that install and then I'll be back once this is done. Okay, so here I am now with the project open inside of my VS Code editor. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is head on over to the source folder. I'm going to move on over to the uh, CSS file, the app.css file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paste all the necessary styles that I need for this particular project right here inside of the app.css file. Now, should you want to have your project actually have the same look and feel as my project does, you'll be able to find a gist to all of the CSS down in the description box below. And you can simply copy uh, all the sort of CSS, paste it into your own app.css file, and then your project will look just like mine. Okay, so now that the styling is pasted into the app.css file, let's actually head on over to the app.js file and start writing the logic to make this application work. And we're gonna start with the basic form. So if you remember, we actually had an input and then a button where a person can go ahead and type in a GitHub username and then see the list of repositories. So we're gonna start working on that very form first. Okay, so let's take a look at what it is that I've just done. So we can kind of ignore all the other extra divs that I've added. They're basically just here for stylistic reasons. Mostly, I just kind of want to focus on the actual form that's defined right over here. So you can see that we've got the form, which is uh, housing an input, and it's also housing a button. And then on the input, you can see that I'm actually passing to the value attribute of the input. I'm passing a variable called username. Of course, it's not defined just yet, but this is going to be something that we're going to be getting from a use state hook call. Essentially, this username variable here is actually going to be state. And of course, we're going to use the use state hook to kind of get that. Moving on down a little bit further, we can see that we've got the on change event specified and then to the on change event i'm passing the set username function essentially that whenever the on change event gets raised it's going to go ahead and call the set username function which again is going to be the updater function that we're going to get from the use state hook so the very same hook that we're going to use to kind of create the username variable in state is also going to have the set username updater function that's going to come along with it and then finally moving on down to the button we can see that on the button we actually have the on click event specified and then what we're passing to that is going to be this handle submit function right over here which basically says every time the on click event gets raised the function that that event is then going to go ahead and call is going to be this handle submit function. Then here in the curly braces where you normally would write the actual text of the button, kind of what it's going to be displaying, we're basically using this loading variable here. So this loading variable, as you can see, the based on the way that I'm using it is going to be a Boolean. So essentially we're going to have another bit of state in this component that we can already see so far that's going to be called loading and it's going to be a Boolean. And the way that we're using it right now is basically saying that if loading is equal to true, then I want you to write on the button searching dot, dot, dot to kind of indicate that we're currently loading in a sort of loading state. Otherwise, if loading is set to false, simply write the word search. So now let's actually start the finding the sort of state and function that we kind of see that our JSX is relying on. So here on line one, I'm currently now importing use state from React. Now on lines five and six, you can see that I'm actually using the uh, use state hook. On line five, I'm using it to create the username variable, which was specified here for the value attribute on my input. And of course, here is going to be the sort of updater function, which is specified right over here. Then on line six, you can see that I'm actually creating my loading variable, which was used down here in the button. And then here you can see that I'm initializing that the false. And then here's the updater function that's going to kind of go along with it. And I've named the updater function set loading, which of course, I have not yet used. So now let's actually go ahead and uh, define the handle submit function, which is getting past the on click event. Okay, so here we can now see that we've got the handle submit function defined. This is the very same function that we're passing to the on click event here on our button. The first thing we're doing is we're using the event argument that is getting passed into us and we're calling upon the prevent default method. Basically, what happens is when a form submits itself by default, what it wants to do is kind of submit itself entirely. It wants to do sort of a full page submit with the sort of browser by itself. But in this case, because we're actually using React to build our project, we actually don't want the form to be the one to do the requesting or to do the submission. Rather, we kind of want to be the ones to do that ourselves. We want to handle the submission and make the request to the actual GitHub API. We want to be the ones to do that all entirely on our own. And so therefore, we're telling the form, don't do your default behavior, prevent default. Rather 
rather, let's go ahead and call the search repos function. So here we are now, we're calling the search repos function, which is defined right over here. The first thing we're doing is we're kind of taking the set loading function. This is the corresponding updater function that we have for our loading state. We're setting our loading state to true. We're then using Axios, which is of course not installed just yet. I'll get to that in just a second. But basically taking Axios, we're making a get request to this particular URL. This is going to go to the get uh, API. We're going to be passing in the username that we just now pulled out of state. This is the very username that the user just typed into the input. And they're making a get request to slash repos. This is now going to give us back an array of all the repositories that this user has under their own account, under that username. And then when this promise resolves, we're going to take the loading variable that we have in state. We're going to go ahead and set it back to false by calling its set loading function. And then we're going to use the set repos function, which of course doesn't exist just yet. But basically, we're going to take the uh, res.data, which we know is going to be an array of repos, and we're going to be passing that into our repos, uh, set repos function. So essentially, what we can see now is we're actually going to have another bit of state that this component is going to be managing. And we're going to be calling this bit of state the repos. Essentially, it's going to be an array that's going to house all the, uh, the, the, the array, all the repos that is coming back to us from the GitHub API. And then we can use that to go ahead and render the list of repositories on the screen. So here's the set repos function already getting used, but now let's actually go ahead and define it. Okay, so here now on line seven, you can see that I've created a variable called repos, which is going to be an array, as you can see by the fact that I'm passing an array to the actual use state hook call. And then here's the updater function, which you can already see is the set repos function. And this is the very same one that we've used down here. And so now that we actually have our repos array, we can actually start writing the logic to actually render the uh, repos and sort of render a name for each repo that we have within the repos array. So let's start doing that now. So here now we have this new div, which is basically going to be our results container. And all we're really doing is we're going to go ahead and call upon this repos array that we now have in state. And we're going to go ahead and call the map method. So kind of two things I want to point out really quickly. Number one, because JSX is just uh, JavaScript, we can simply call the simple dot map method, which is just basic JavaScript syntax. Essentially, because JSX is JavaScript, we don't have to use any kind of, you know, fancy uh, template language. We don't have to use like a V-4 or like an NG4 or anything like that. We can simply just use JavaScript to actually go ahead and loop over our array. So since in JavaScript, we typically use a dot map here too, we can just use dot map. And then another thing that I want to point out that I think is quite important is that here, because I'm actually trying to use repos as an array, it's pretty important for me to actually use this initializer here to kind of set it to an array as opposed to leaving this empty. Because if I just use the use state hook sure i'll have the repos variable declared but it's going to be undefined now the problem is because the map method is used only on an array you can't use the map method on something that's not an array and surely can't use it on something that's undefined what's going to end up happening is here i would i would have to have some extra logic in my jsx to see whether or not the repos array is currently an array or not in other words if it's an array then i can call that map if it's not an array then don't do anything and basically you have to uh, require me to write extra logic otherwise the project is simply going to crash it's not going to run so the way so as a simple way to kind of prevent that from me having to write extra logic within my JSX, I can simply go up here and initialize my array to an empty array. Because on an empty array, you can still actually call the dot map method, even though nothing, nothing's going to happen. But because it is actually an instance of an array, the dot map method is actually valid to call and the application is not going to crash, it's not going to blow up. Now, what's happening is every single time they're actually iterating over an item within our repos array when we're calling dot map, we're actually trying to call a function called render the repo, which is not yet defined. So let's go ahead and define that now. So here's this render repo function that is now defined. At every iteration, it's going to be receiving the repo argument, the sort of repo object that that iteration within the array. And all this is very simply doing is it's going to go ahead and render this div that's going to house this h2. And then the h2 is simply going to go ahead and display the repo.name. So essentially repo is going to be an object that we're going to be getting back from the GitHub API. It's going to have on it a key called name, which is going to be the actual name of the repository, which we've seen that was listed earlier when I kind of showed you the demo. And then another thing that I kind of want to point out is here, I'm actually giving it a key. Now, if you recall in last week's video, when I kind of showed you a simple example of iterating, iterating over a collection of items, I was actually using the index because I didn't actually have an ID to kind of specify as the key. But Luckily for us here in this case, GitHub is actually giving us an ID, a unique ID for each um, item within this array. And so now what I can actually do is I can satisfy the React requirements of actually making sure that I'm using something unique and something that is not an index. I can actually see that for the key, I'm going to actually use the repo.id. It's going to be an actual uniquely generated ID that's going to be given to us by the GitHub API. Okay, so we're about ready to actually go ahead and run the app and see whether or not we can already start searching for repositories. But one thing we need to do really quickly is, of course, make sure that we actually install Axios and then import it so that our components can go ahead and use it. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and say, Yarn at Axios. Again, if you want to use NPM, you can use NPM, but make sure you do in fact install Axios. Okay, so now that Axios is done installing, let me head on back into the project, make sure that I've got it imported. Okay, so now that Axios is imported and installed uh, successfully, let's actually go back to the terminal. Let's start the project up. I'm going to use Yarn Start. If you want to use NPM Start, you can do that. We're going to get the project started and see if we can actually start searching for repositories for a given username. Okay, so here we are now in our application. Let's see if the searching of repositories is working successfully. Okay, so I'm in my input. I've typed in coding with Chaim. Let me hit enter. 
And it seems that the searching is working correctly because I did in fact get back a response with all the repositories that I have under the Coding with Chaim username. So now the next step would be is to make it so that when we actually go ahead and click on one of these guys, we do in fact get the result of the additional details being shown here on the right hand side of the screen. So let's start working on that now. So right now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and build a new component and the sole responsibility of this component is going to be to actually render those additional details on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, so I've created a new file and this file is now called repo details.js and it's going to be in this file that I'm going to write all the necessary code for that other component that's going to be responsible simply to show us the details of a given repository. Okay, so here you can now see that all I've done is I've created a function called repo details. And now here you can see that this is going to be a function that's going to be receiving props as an argument. Now if you recall, props is always going to be an object, which means that in this sort of function definition here, I can actually use object destructuring to kind of pull the props that I want out of that props object. So instead of me having to reference the props by saying props.this, props.that, I can simply pull them out and then I can just go ahead and use the variable names individually. So because I know that the props that this particular component is going to be receiving is going to be called details and loading, I can simply use object destruction to kind of create a variable called details and then another variable called loading. And then in my component, instead of having to say props.loading or props.details, I can just say details and loading. And again, this is because of two assumptions. One is because I know that props will always be an object. And two, because I know the names of the props that this particular component will be receiving. So here you can see that I'm saying that if loading is equal to true, then simply give me an h1 that's going to say loading dot dot dot. Otherwise, if it's not currently loading, when loading is set to false, go ahead and show me this basic table. I have a bunch of sort of columns and rows, or rather rows and columns, where we're basically saying, uh, here we're going to you know, see the details on name. This is going to be the details object that we're going to be passing in as a prop that's going to actually have the details that we got back from the GitHub API. Here we're rendering the name. Here we're rendering how many forks it has, the primary language, and here we're rendering how many stars it has. So now let's head back to the app component and see how we actually use the details component. Okay, so the first thing, of course, we need to do is make sure that we import the repo details components. So now in line three, I'm saying import repo details from dot slash repo details. That's going to be the relative path from where I am now to the repo details component. Then down here in my JSX, you can see that I'm actually using the repo details tag, but of course I'm using the uppercase R to indicate that this is a component. This is not just some basic JSX underlying HTML element, rather this is my component. And here are the two props that I know the repo details component is going to need. First of all, it's going to have a prop that's going to be called details. And this is going to actually hold this details uh, variable here, which has not been defined just yet. So that basically is going to be a new bit of state that our app component is now going to start managing. And then here too, we have this other variable that is going to get passed down to the repo details component that we're calling loading. And this is going to correspond to the details loading uh, variable that is of course another bit of state that the app component is now going to need to define. So let's start working on that now. So coming back up to the top of my app component, you can now see that I've got two more bits of state that are now getting defined. First of all, I've got the details object. You can see that this is an object because that's what I'm passing into the use state hook. And I'm calling it details. Here is this corresponding updater function, which is called set details. Here's my uh, details loading Boolean, which you can see it's a Boolean because I'm passing false to the use state hook. And here's this updater function that I'm calling set details loading. And again, the details and the details loading variables are the words getting passed down as props to my repo details component. So now what we need to do is actually focus on the logic of what happens when you actually click on the repository to go make that separate Ajax request back to the GitHub API to get those additional details. Okay, so now if we head back on over to our render repo function, you can see that on the div, I've essentially specified an on click event. Essentially what's going to happen is when we actually click on the div, this click event is going to get raised and then it's going to go ahead and call this get details function passing in the repo dot name. So here is this get details function, which is receiving a repo name as an argument. And then basically what we're doing is we're going to take the details loading variable that we have in state right over here. We're going to set that to true by calling the set details loading variable. We're setting that to true. Once again, we're going to be making an Ajax request. We're going to make an, a get request of the GitHub API. This time we're going to go to slash repos slash username slash repo name. So this, essentially this is the request that we need to make to get the additional details about a given repository under a username. And then once that, pre, once that promise resolves, we're going to set the uh, details loading variable back to false. Then we're going to take the set details function that we got back from the use state hook for the details argument. This is basically that object that's going to hold all the details. This is its updater function. We're taking the res.data. This is going to be the response that we get back from GitHub. We know that this is going to be an object that's going to have all the details about a given repository. We're then going to pass it into our set details function call. This is then going to go ahead and update state, going to go ahead and call our repo details component, pass down those details. In this point, now loading will be set to false because the sort of request is now done. It's resolved. We already got the details back. Therefore, loading will be set to false. We now come into the sort of else block, even though there's not really an else block, but conceptually, this is what's happening. We come into the sort of return statement here, and we actually go ahead and render all the sort of corresponding details about the given component. So that's basically the logic. That's what should happen. Let's see if this does in fact happen. So now we're back in the application. Let's go ahead and search for a particular username. Okay, so once again, I'm searching for Cody with Chaim. Let me hit enter. 
Here are all the repositories under Coding with Chaim. Let's hit one of these guys, click on it. And as you can see, the loading uh, word flashed for like about a second. But once it was done loading, we can now see that we do in fact get the additional details about the repository. So we get the name again, we get how many forks it has, its primary language, and then of course how many stars it has. So now one more feature that I kind of want to add into this particular project is that when we go back to the input, say you've already searched for a repository under a given input. When you go back to the input and you start searching for a new username, I kind of want all the data to kind of get cleared out. Because of course, once you're starting to search for a new username, it kind of doesn't make sense to see the data that corresponds back to an old username. So the goal is to make it that as soon as you start changing the value in the input, everything gets cleared out. So let's see how we're going to do that. So to make this feature happen, we're actually going to go ahead and use the use effect hook. Now the reason why we're going to use the use effect hook, because if you recall, last week I mentioned that if you ever want something to happen based on the fact that a particular bit of state changes, use the use effect hook, because the use effect hook can actually wash that bit of state. You can kind of pass it to your dependency array and say that, look at that bit of state. If that bit of state changes, I want you to go ahead and run whatever you're running again. So that's perfect, because basically what we can now do is we can take the use effect hook, tell it to look at the username variable, and if the username variable changes, go ahead and clear out all the data in the repos array as well as the details uh, object. So let me show you what I mean by that in code, and this will become a little bit clearer. Okay, so here now you can see that I'm actually using the use effect hook, and basically what I'm doing is I'm telling it, look at the username, and the way that I'm telling it to look at the username is because I'm taking the actual username variable that we have in state, I'm passing it into the dependency array of the use effect hook call, and then what I'm telling it is every single time that you see that the username variable is actually changing, I want you to very simply go ahead and call set repos and set that back to an empty array, call set details and set that back to an empty object. This way we're gonna go ahead and clear all the data of a previous username. So let's see if this does in fact work. So once again, I'm back in the browser, I'm searching for the repositories under the name Coding with Chaim. Let me hit enter. There are the repositories. Let me click on one. Let me see the additional details. But now, most importantly, let me go back into my input. Let me just kind of hit backspace. We made a change to the actual value of username, and now we can see that all the data of the previous selection got cleared out. But as it turns out, there actually is still one problem left with this project. Because here I am now, I've got the words coding with chai. In other words, I'm missing the M of my name, and if I try to hit enter, well, now the application is totally busted because, of course, there is no username coding with Chai. It's missing the M, so GitHub can't actually find the sort of results for this particular username. And now the project is not handling this gracefully at all. The word searching is just dot, dot, dot. It's just still there. It's kind of still in a loading state. It never leaves the loading state, but most importantly, there's no indication to the user that something went wrong. All we have is the fact that it's just stuck on loading, and it might just be loading for a long time. There's really no indication that this application is currently busted. So ideally, what you would want to now do is, and this will be a nice little exercise for yourself to kind of take everything that we learned over the last two weeks and see that it's all kind of really been internalized for you. A nice little exercise would be to actually handle this uh, error gracefully. Essentially, what you should do is turn the loading state back off and then have some kind of indication on screen to tell the user, hey, I couldn't find the results for that given username. Well, anyways, that does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll be back next week with another video. Woo!